Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ram Studio Comics. In today's video, I want to show you how we can take a standard character, forward facing. We're going to work off a nine heads tall model. And then I want to show you how we can revisit that character multiple times and get to a stronger, uh, brutish, kind of hulkish character. So it should be a fun exercise. These are actually lessons from a course that I'm developing right now called How to Draw Dynamic Superheroes Start to Finish. So if you're interested in that, there'll be a link in the description box below. You can do an early sign up on my Gumroad, get the lessons that are active now, and I'm adding new lessons each week, and you actually get a discount for being an early signer. Uh, if not, you can just wait till it's available on Udemy, and the lessons are also available on my Skillshare. So back to this particular lesson, if you notice, I'm just drawing out the traditional forms uh, or lengths of the proportions of the character, and it's a pretty standardized character. He's probably a little bit wider, a little bit hero-esque, but he's not a big hulkish brute yet. And I think this is an important exercise because if you think about it, most people can be looked at as a skinny individual or a big muscle-bound person, right? We all have the ability to pack on lots of muscle. I mean, just look at Carrot Top, right? Uh, but the neat thing about comics is you can take it a lot further, obviously. You can uh, if, you, if you notice here, I just widened out the character, and you're going to see a lot of change just with that. Uh, but that's actually changing the skeletal structure and making the character overly wide. Uh, but it didn't change any of the lengths. Like, the lengths of the legs are going to now appear very tall. And I probably started a bit higher with the, uh, the pelvis anyways. But you'll see that we're going to need to adjust that if we want to get a very dynamic, epic, muscular character. Again, I'm going to keep referencing characters like the Hulk or Pit or somebody like that. It's very massive and just monstrously big. Uh, to get that, we need to make some other adjustments. So what we're going to do here is we're going to shrink down these legs a bit, which in turn, by comparison, is going to make the upper body mass look larger. We're also going to grab the upper body mass and increase the size of that as well. So that's going to make the arms look bigger and, again, just kind of dwarf those legs a little bit, but you know, and obviously with the larger hands that also helps, but we really want to push that upper body mass. Uh, another technique for this is just to decrease the size of the head. By making the head smaller, it makes everything else comparatively look larger. So it's, it's really fun to kind of explore these different things. You know, just like drawing a standard character off to the side, if they're very small, it's gonna look like this character is just huge. Uh, you can do that with things like cars and street signs and anything that gives the viewer a representation of what that scene is like. Now, after you've worked out all these fundamental base shapes and forms, you know, we'll redraw this a bit and we'll kind of tighten it up. We'll see if it really works. Sometimes you tend to draw this stuff and maybe it looks good in the rough sketch, but until you refine the anatomy, you don't really know if it's going to work. I mean, you generally have a pretty good idea. I, I know by looking at this, it's probably going to work out. But I like to do this refinement, check the anatomy one last time. I'm still making small interval changes. Uh, I always do. I always think that there's a lot that can be done with just minute changes and to really not overlook that, to, to see you know how far you can really push it. And one of the things the detail work gives you is kind of the shape of everything so or the direction that the anatomy is taken. So even though the large bulk shapes are in place and the forms are in place, until you refine it and you really draw in those little segments of the anatomy and the overlap of the muscles, you really don't know if it's going to be uh, as good as you hoped it would be. Uh, this one, I think, came out pretty good for what I was looking for. But if you notice from that very initial sketch, it's come out entirely different now. It's an entirely different character with a lot different presence on the page. Uh, you could tell that this one on the furthest right is very powerful, very strong. I think he even looks stronger than the middle sketch. Definitely looks a lot more powerful than the first sketch. And I think that if we just took that first one and scaled it down about 25% from this uh, last one, it would really give the presence that this character is just massive and powerful. And that's what we we're looking for. So, you know, again, these types of exercises can be so important because you're able to mess around with it and really stretch your imagination. Like, for instance, test it out and see what a character looks like with really big forearms. Uh, what they look like if, you know, they have these massive shoulders, but maybe the arms are a little smaller. You know, test all these little differences out. Uh, for instance, if you're drawing a character like a werewolf, then those longer forearms uh, are going to make a lot of sense with that character and really help you to paint the narrative or paint the picture of what you're trying to do with that character. So proportions are often overlooked, but 
insanely powerful for being descriptive of the character. And I'll tell you, all that great, cool rendering work that we'll talk about later that you put on top of something like this, it only works if you took the time to get the underlying foundation correct, and that's the proportions. So create lots of varieties with these proportions, you know, the ones that really sink in and you go, okay, that's my muscle bound brute, that's my speed character, pin them to the wall, they're great reference. Uh, so now in this next section, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit more, quite a bit more actually, because what I'm doing here is just refining the line work and I wanna drop in some shadows. So it's another way to check the work and to say, okay, did did these proportions really sit well? Because again, until you refine it a bit more and you add in some shapes of shadows, it might work, but this will really tell you. So, uh, and I don't overshade this character, but I wanted to give you a little bit better representation of what it would look like in the next stage. Um, so let me know too if you want to see more shading videos and things like that. It's something I need to practice more and I love sharing on the channel if you love watching it. Uh, so yeah, just adding in shapes of shadows. One thing I will say about this, because this part's going to move by rather quickly, is I try to fight the urge to put rounded shadows on everything. It's real easy, like even there with the chest, a bit too rounded. Like you can really mix up the shadow shapes and what I tend to see is kind of this yin and yang symbol, half of a yin and yang symbol that I do on a lot of the muscles or almost like a stretched out comma shape but really fight the urge to just trace those muscles with a circular shadow because it just gives us overly like bubbly look to the anatomy which I think kind of hurts it rather than helps it. Uh, but that'll bring this one to a close so hopefully you've enjoyed this video. I'd love to know what you think in the comments section below. What else you'd like to see on the channel in the future and I'll be sure to get that on the schedule. As always, thanks for watching, keep drawing, keep having fun, and I will talk to you soon.